Hello everyone and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Where we last left off we had managed to, well, scare a man inside a carriage and now we're reading all these encyclopedias so we can have less notifications up. And now we're on the beer tasting notes, so let's go. Balfour and Barrett Vienna Beer. Sean's tasting notes. I didn't realise it was legal to patent pasteurised sheep's urine. I'd rather liter I literally rather drain a boil. I'm beginning to have second thoughts about this whole project. Mild Ale. Basal Gets Respite. Interesting. Period advertisements for this beer suggest that the innumerable workers who dug the miles upon miles of tunnels collect is beneath London, and nose constantly assaulted by nauseous fumes and their eyes offended by unspeakable refuses, would appreciate a balanced and moderate brew bottled in the north of Scotland, which as far as I can tell is three lizers for the price of one. Big Bastard Ale. <laughs> Strong Ale. Uh, oh god, this one has bits in it. I've changed my mind. I don't want to do this anymore. No, no, I have to. This is bigger than me. This is important. Work of the culinary arcology. Tell my mom I love her. Why? Addendum. The big bastard lives up to its name with an intense dish rack flavour and a mouthfeel more akin to El Dente pasta than beer. The finish is apparently three hours of psychosis to judge by the lost time of the 17 page handwritten diatribe on the mating habits of flinch finches I found on my desk. Excuse me, I might just pop to the loo for the 17th bloody time in an hour. Uh, that's scary. Gun and Son Scotch Ale. While I think back on the hardships of England has inflicted on our neighbours to the north, all the wars, the oppressions, the outlawing of the kilt, I'm fairly sure this beer pays them all back with interest. This isn't a beer. This is a declaration of war in liquid form. This is like being struck about the head with a caber and similar Scottish cliches. I'm going to have a bit of a lie down and have a good long think about my life choices now. Leaping Lock Fox Lager. A big, bold flavour of stomach acid finishes with notes of someone else's cold chewing gum and a smattering of pencil shavings. The beer itself has a consistency not dissimilar to white or egg whites that have curdled a bit, with a head like a dirty linen that leaves a lacing of grey sludge on the walls of the glass. Going by the scale of the other beers we've tried on this project, I'd say 3 out of 5 stars would definitely order again. Merlin and Arthur Imperial Stout. That's a cool bottle. Who's if pulleth this pint from this cask shall be rightwise king born of England, which would be fortunate as he could then immediately put the brewer of this travesty to death for crimes against the state. The ensuing crisis of succession, civil war and mass outbreak of food poisoning would surely plunge us into a dystopian age to make a British comic book writer in the 1980s wet himself with glee. Mount de Corunes plus de Virtus, indeed. And no, I'm not going to translate for you. You probably, sh you should pr bloody know what it means. Red Growler. Here's a fun beer fact for you. Cask conditioned beers are often treated with icing glass, which is a substance obtained from the dried swim bladder of cod in order to clarify the brew and remove particles or particulates like spent yeast. In the case of Red Glower Special Brewed, I think we're all, we'd all have been happier skipping the beer altogether and just chewing on the dried flesh bladder. Robert's Bonabi and Co. Amber Ale. With its strong flavour and heady aroma, this beer would pair wonderfully with halibut. I'm sorry, did I say pair with? I meant taste of. It tastes of halibut. Ugh. The body has an un... un uh, how do you say that? Unctuous pond scum quality but manages to be gritty at the same time. Overall, I'd rate this beer somewhere between Poison Oak and Alive and Furious Piranha on the things I'd willingly put in my body scale. Thames Brewery Pale Ale. There's a very easy joke to be made here about the purity of the Thames as compared to the quality of this beer, but I'm not going to make it. No such an obvious jab doesn't do true justice to the vileness of this drink. On every level on which it's possible to enjoy beer, this one is a spectacular failure. It tastes like the insides of a carburetor, it looks like something my Uncle Rory had drained from a growth on his foot, and the smell. Well, just be thankful Obstacle hasn't added smell vision technology to the Helis interface yet. I note, loaded this one up on one of the old Animus 3.0 rigs, and now everything smells of bin juice. I think I need a CAT scan. The Blind Goose. Ah, the mild ale, brewing an equivalent of a beige carpet of a, or a smooth jazz album. Looking back at the log files, I'm quite certain I synchronised this particular sense of sense memory, but I'll be buggered if I can remember anything about it. It's like an unmemory, a flavour that is defined only by its absence. It's almost poetic in its way. 
I guess that's supposed to be in a way rather than in its way. Shame it's really only suitable for sale to children or American supermarkets. All right, press flowers. Amrelisis, pride. Uh, you American cowslip, your divinity. Linnaeus was given to the name Do Dodecathion, which signifies 12 divinities. is perhaps rather a pompous name for so modest flower, but the point but botanists, and fl especially flower lovers, are not very particular. Uh, broom, humility, blah, 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 blah. Jonquil, Narcissus, desire. L Lorustinus, or it might be La L Laura, or La Rustinus. I don't want to say that. I die if neglected. <laughs> okay. Uh, melancholy. Uh, duh, duh. Mimosa, isn't that? No, that's a, that's a samosa. Although I think a mimosa is also one of those. Uh, poppy, consolation. Uh, rose, love. St. John's Wort, Superstition, Sunflower, False Riches, Thrift, Sympathy. Some of these flowers just have the name and what it means, and that's it. Whereas other ones have, like, freaking stories about them. Illustrations. The Blank Parlour. A scene in Leicester Square. Fruit sellers going to Jerusalem. Basila of St. Clement. Parisians reading notices of the new taxes. I really didn't read that as New Texas. <laughs> Vestibule of the French National Assembly of by at Versailles. The Monday popular concerts. Thanksgiving the Illuminations. The Thanksgiving Day, the Lord Mayor presenting the city sword to the Queen at the Temple Ball Bar. School children singing God Save the Queen in the Green Park. Patience of Determination. It's literally just a woman with an umbrella with a lot of guys around. And a woman. Thanksgiving Day, Illumination of St. Paul's Cathedral. Thanksgiving Day, the Royal Pew at St. Paul's Cathedral. Easter Monday, Volunteer Review at Brighton, Skirmishers. Festival of the Highland Scotland Society, the health of the Duke of Rothsby and Highland Honours. Discussing the budget. Arch Cottage, Barford. The Labourers' Home at White Nash. French Communists in London. And that's it so far. Present day, people. Bishop. Oh, this is about the actual people. Um, I don't know anything about Bishop. And I stumbled upon a hacker collective calling themselves the Initiates. Which is actually one of the mobile phone apps. A uh, little network and have been spying on assassins and Templars alike for years. A few of them even managed to infiltrate an assassin cell. This is Bishop and she's in charge of the Initiates now. And that's what it's like with Grumpy Old Bill. And still don't know who she is, and quite frankly, I'm loath to admit it drives me batshit crazy. A pinky swore, sorry, not sorry. Isabel Ardent. Uh, has moved to United Kingdom to return a car at the University of Cambridge. Otso Berg. Father, da, 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 Finland, help me. Quit the army. Rebecca Crane. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Founder, true calling as the maker of things. Don't sass me, you even make a cup of fucking coffee. Beck swears too much, has a very easy and good nature, but she's lost friend along the way. Clay, Lucy, Desmond. Assassins rarely retire, if you know what I mean, but she's never once thought about giving up and proud to say that she's my very best friend in the world. Aww. <laughs> she's bloody annoying and a vegetarian, so you can imagine how easy that makes finding food while you're on assignment. Death could be upon us at any minute, but oh dear, we must always procure bits of tree in order to sustain Rebecca. Here's your punishment. Sean's birthday is the 16th of November, 1985. Not cool, Bex. And I happen to think I look quite good for my age. I mean, you're younger than her, so yeah. I don't know how you had time to write all of this up, seeing as you're in another place doing missions. Also, they changed how you look again. 
where originally you looked completely fine, you now look like a completely different person. You look like a school teacher. What the hell happened to you, man? I'm not talking about... No, whatever. Sean found a millennia old conspiracy that reached the highest levels. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Violet da Costa. Uh, Violet's a Templar. Alvaro Garnamatica. Miscellaneous. Abstergo. 1910, 1937. Uh, crowning achievement of late Dr. Warren Vidic. Although, if we looked into Unity, we would know that that's not the case. Uh, Helix. Cloud based software developed by Abstergo enabling users to access a vast library of genetic memories that have been packed into virtual experiences. Assassin Intel. Okay, we got 10 of these. So, uh, yeah, let's play audio file. Isabel! What a lovely surprise! Are you recording this? Hmm? Oh, yes, I record everything I do. Never know when an unexpected breakthrough will happen. How are you? Terrible. I've been tasked with archiving the genetic memories from Project Legacy. Well, it's a shame how that ended, but I'm glad to see the data isn't going to waste. It's a waste of my time and talent, just as your current assignment is a waste of yours. Ah, work is work. Despite the setbacks in Denver, the Arab Stergo satellite is a very interesting... Fiddick had his chance, and he's blown it. They'll never find a new apple in time for launch. The Animus Project is dead in the water. Meanwhile, you and I are members of the Inner Sanctum, and we're being treated like sodding interns. But what if we could give Mr. Rickon a new working piece of Eden? I'm listening. Don't listen. Look. Look at this. P.E. number 66? Where did it come from? The Project Legacy data revealed that the company acquired it in the 40s. I want you to help me get it working again. This fabric, it's very fragile. But there's technology in it. You study the shroud. Find out anything you can about its original purpose and methods of use. I'll cross-reference the genetic memories from Project Legacy against my archive. With any luck, I can locate more people who came into contact with it. Together, we can unlock the artifact's secrets. I get to play with an artifact and take Vidic down a peg? How can I refuse? Okay, that was 2011. That's before the first game, actually. 2012. Future Technology, Paris Branch. You called me all the way to Paris for this madness? Listen, it's been months and we are no closer to get the Shroud to work. The microscopic technology in its fibers is similar to what we found in other pieces of Eden. An alloy we've dubbed Pathoritka. This alloy seems to react specifically to thought, but the artifact itself remains inert. That's still no reason for this course of action. What if the Shroud doesn't save you? Do you know just how much of Abstergo's money we've embezzled into our sacred project here? Because I'm sure Mr. Rickin noticed by now. And if we have nothing to show for it, so I'm going to wrap myself in the Shroud. And you're going to do what needs to be done. One way or another, our current dilemma will be resolved. Fine. Oh, shit. I am conscious, the erudite god. Well then, that doesn't sound great. And that is literally... God, these fucking dates. Why can't we just stick to one date structure? Day, month, year. Rather than month, year, day, or month day year or year day month or month year month day or hour seconds day year century just fucking stick to one date structure what is this is this year month day or year day month am i an idiot because it says <laughs> it says that it says 22 and i'm pretty sure there's no 22 months there's only 12 Either that or I'm missing another 10 months. Still, have one structure. I'm not happy about this at all. Why must you always shoot yourself in the head to summon the precursor consciousness? Because it works. I tried slitting my wrists, nothing. I tried overdosing on pills. I had to get my stomach pumped. It was all very unpleasant. 
It has to be a major wound for the artifact to activate. The risk is unacceptable. Without you, there's no future technology division. So I brought you a qualified volunteer. I'm Agent Viola DaCosta. It's an honor to meet you, sir. Oh, oh, is it? I tried to recruit you once, and you turned me down for Sigma Team. I, I thought I could do more good in the field. Horse shit! A dazzling brain like yours is going to waste. Agent Acosta is assigned to you for six months. Make the most of it. Then let's get started. Rub yourself in the artifact, uh, please. I know how to summon the precursor, but I've never been able to communicate with him. This is going to be an interrogation. Bingo! If it's all the same to you, I'm going to leave before the mess. Mess? What did she mean by... I am Consus, the erudite god. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, hello. Uh, I want to know more about you. D tell me, did you create the shroud? When I was flesh, I apprenticed with the Faustus, a maker. The war of unification raged. We created devastating swords to end it, but then... I created shrouds to heal. I suspected that it might have been a tool to treat casualties of war. How does the shroud heal such terrible damage? The body is a construct. A machine. Blueprints stored within. Shrouds access these recovery centers. Repairs damage to specifications. <laughs> a factory reset. Wait. Shrouds? There's more than this one? This is the original. My prototype. Created in the year 1923 of the Isu era. Isu era? I have so many questions, uh, uh, but let's stick with you. How is it that your mind resides in this artifact? I was old. I wanted more time. Bodies are constructs. Minds are programs. Uploaded my program into the shroud to cheat death. Succeeded. Failed. Trapped in my prototype. Trapped in my forgotten land. Alive. Awake. Cannot speak. Only watch. Generations pass. Technology grew. My kind created yours. I never imagined machines like you were possible. My descendants prove me wrong. Generations? How long have you been? The damage is repaired. Rest now. <sighs> that was indescribable. When can we do it again? How about now? Oh my god. Um, okay. So they had a shroud that pretty much is the shroud that Jesus had that made him come back. At least that's what they're explaining out as in this. Okay. Um, we won't watch any more or listen to any more because we're going to be here for a while if we did so. And I'd rather do it in order. So we're up to three. We need to get four or five. Well, four up to eleven. And then we can start going through to that. And then, you know, continue on. So, close that for now. Miscellaneous, uh, soothing syrup, and a shard of Eden. Oh, it's here now. Uh, da, 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 da. The artifact hidden in the mist, the golden fleece. Uh, uh, the other than Jesus, there are no reports of any piece of Eden capable of bringing back the dead. And until I see it for myself in an animus, I otherwise remain completely skeptic. Well, I mean, we just had freaking audio clips so away oh, to the mission it looks dreadful. and the no bad thing okay so now we need to start making our way down here Sorry, mate. I need this. Oh, did they just become... Can I become they or something? Control, pal. Easy! 
Hey there, buddy. Jacob infiltrates the mysterious Lambeth Asylum to put an end to Dr. Elliotson. Model 1 with all that. Is he having trouble with that umbrella? Mr. Fry, I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes, we had the most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson, I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his view. career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. Sure thing. <laughs> Just stop whistling, it's fine. Right, is there actually anything that doesn't look like it? I was going to say, if there's any chests, I just want to be aware of them now. You need lockpick too. Okay, just not going that way. Whee, bouncy, bouncy. There's something up there. Oh no, it's just a thing. I'm gonna go this way. Someone must be staying up here because there's a bed. <laughs> Pricked her key and said she was fired! The bugger will get in trouble for this. Where would I find the doctor? in the operating room. Oh, would you look at that? I was right. Uh. <laughs> okay. As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. <laughs> you don't seem to care. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Lidson. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. Wow. There's a handprint on this window. Explore the area, identify opportunities. Nurse, infiltration opportunity, young doctor, unique kill opportunity. I want to do the unique kill opportunity if I can. The only true. How to do it? I shall resume my discourse on Get in. Uh, uh, 
You seem to be the problem, miss. What's the matter? Oh, young man, help. I must speak with Miss Nightingale at once. One of the brutes stole my key and there's no one around. I can't get out of here. Stole your key? Don't go anywhere. I might be able to do something. Oh, quite. Thank you, sir. No problem. Well, you'll know where to find me, sir. Oh, go on now, sir. I will wait here. Okay. Nightingale that I'll not be working for this asylum ever again. Good idea. I do need to head down, so let's see if I can find the stairs that go down. I could just sneak through the front door, but I kinda wanna go down first, so I shall resume my discourse on phrenology, the only true science of the mind. Okay, that just leads straight into there. I'd rather...
Oh, look, man, shut up. Where are the stairs? spot me because he's talking about stuff. Okay, there's nothing down here so I kind of wasted my time. Did I? Oh, hi! Apart from target. I guess he did see me then. My bad. Hopefully it doesn't send me too far back and I still have the key. To Dr. do Ellis. it. Okay, so I got to keep the key. You have my gratitude, sir. I shall inform Miss Nightingale that I'm not the only one. Fine by me. Are they electrocuting his feet? Ugh, bloody rats! Take that, you filth! Can it be to fix a bloody crack in the wall? And don't come back! Ugh! I'm sorry, sir, but you aren't allowed in here. <sighs> Hide the corpse. I'm afraid I must ask you to leave, sir. Authorized personnel only. Please, go away. We're going over time actually, I just realized. So we're going to stop here in the next episode. 
we're going to take the place of this um, thing. So until then, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye, guys.